All right, so maybe let's start with the first question. Y'all can just verbally reply and give me your answers. And <clears throat> yeah, so let's just start by talking about your experience, your motivations for joining IEO. Like, what was your reason for to, for choosing to participate in like Kijang and MyEO? Um, firstly, I I I I thought of like joining Kijang and IEO mainly because I wanted to challenge myself um in the field of economics because um Kijang and like MyEO were like the only two economics competition like going on in Malaysia at that time. And besides that, I had not known of any other economics competition except maybe like a few essay and case study competitions. So yeah, that was the main thing. I would just wanted to challenge myself. Mm -hmm. How about everyone else? Were y'all also just looking for a challenge? Yeah, as for me, I would say, yeah, I was looking for a challenge. And because Kijab was promoted by my economics teacher in school, so I was like, why not? I just sign up. And then one thing led to another. Kijab went to my EO and then led to IEO right now. Yeah. And I guess a big congratulations to all of you as well. I should have said this right at the start, but really it's such a great effort from you guys to be able to represent Malaysia. Um, yeah. Do you think that these are really important opportunities? Like, how, how do you think the access to these opportunities are right now? And why do you think these, these are so important for kids like us to participate in? Um, I definitely think that this kind of opportunity uh, definitely improves your CV. So, yeah, <laughs> it gives an age in your resume. That's one thing. And number two, you can also test your knowledge other than just like theoretically just reading the textbook and just answering exam based questions. So this is a good um, opportunity for students to actually test their knowledge like in real life and see how economics works, not just the theories, but also look into the factual information. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that does make sense, I think. Anything else from Alex or any of the others? Wait, can we repeat the question one more time? Yeah, sure. Uh, why do you feel like opportunities like Kijang, MyEO, and IEO are such important opportunities for students like us? Hmm. I personally, I think like like I agree with what Lini said. It's definitely incredibly fun for okay, at least for me personally. I think incredibly fun to you know view these subjects outside of what we learn in high school like i think having the opportunity to learn about the subjects that you enjoy the most to a higher level are things that i tend to appreciate a lot and this is precisely what my eo or ieo is able to offer us yeah mm -hmm. thank you for that. so <clears throat> i guess another related question is why economics? Like, why? How did you guys become interested in economics instead of like pure science, for example? Um, okay, I, I think I'll take that. So, firstly, mm -hmm. like, one word to phrase it would be curiosity, because I also come from a background of um, learning pure science in my school, and economics was, wasn't like one of my targets when I was in lower secondary at all. So, um, it was purely curiosity that I first stumbled upon economics, and I was I was very fascinated at the start because um I was reading a lot of articles on the economy and all, and I really wanted to know like how things work and what goes on behind the background because usually whatever I see in the news it's just like very surface level stuff, and I don't get to know like what what the terms actually mean so which which is why that was the starting point that made me want to like uh go into economics and that's how i progress progress this far mm. okay thank you is does everyone else also feel like is there experience um i did have an experience actually um because they actually asked me in one of my interviews after i finished my spm they asked me um, how do you think the chosen profession can help um, 
the country's economic. Then I was like, um, what should I answer? Like economics means economics because I'm from a pure science background. So I had no idea what's economics. For me, country's economic is the country's economy. <laughs> so that's all, that's the idea of it. So um, when I wanted to choose my subjects for my A-levels, I just randomly picked, okay, let's just choose econs and just see like how it's going so we can know what's actually economics because I used to be the person like when our country was in inflation, one of my ideas was like, just print more money, then you can just solve the problem. But now after learning, I can see, oh, that idea is not really a good one. So I think yeah, that's what um, made me like choose economics. I just randomly picked it. Uh, I didn't know it would be me this far, actually. Mm-hmm. I think that's very well said, Lini. And I'm glad that you've made that choice. Sounds like it's turned out quite well for you. <laughs> so maybe can you guys like, provide any examples of a memorable research or academic challenge or maybe a problem from your efforts through this journey so far that you've encountered, like a particularly difficult economics problem so far? And explain to us how you approached it just so people for the audience viewing this like how would you recommend people to approach any difficult um, economics problems that they encounter Uh, i think i can take that question like when you mentioned that um how to like particularly like how to like any economic issue I think mm-hmm. right like the principles of things and because like in economics it's like so subjective right like we have different like tech like different um policies like different techniques say for example inflation to control inflation there's things like monetary policy fiscal policy supply side policy and all that there's like a variety of that and like at the same time it depends on the situation because some can work, some might not work, and most of the time you need a balance of sorts. So, mm-hmm. like, really, I think it will go down to the fundamentals of things and, like, just sort of, like, get, like, an equilibrium of things. Mm-hmm. That's quite well said, I think, Julius. Thank you for that. Thank Anyone you. else also have the same kind of experience? Um, all right, let's move on then. So kind of an interrelated question. Do you guys have a general methodology for problem solving when it comes to Olympic competitions? Or is there anything new that you've learned from your IEO training so far that has helped you in the way that you approach economics? (laughs) Or maybe like any tidbits of advice that you could give the audience? Doesn't have to be super complex. I think, like, for me personally, like, mm. this is my first Olympia I'm ever joining. And, mm. like, generally, for how I study things, especially for exams and everything, for like the past years of my life, it's always just, it goes down to like the principles of things, read the textbook. Like, make sure you understand it, but not memorize it. You understand mm-hmm. everything, the concept. Watch YouTube videos. Make some notes. And that's about it. <laughs> but do you feel like the way that you study for IEO is different at all to the way that you study for, say, a typical high school exam? Or is it quite similar, actually? I think for IEO generally, it would be a bit more different because the IEO consists of different components. There's the economics part, the financial part, and the business case. Business case is definitely something that most of us have weren't prepared for in school, I would say. For economics part, I would say generally that they give like a like an online textbook, which you can read. And I think generally it's similar to studying an exam, but at the same time, the questions they ask are very critical thinking and Johnny you won't find in a normal exam but you really really need to stimulate your mind and everything and that's for the financial part to be honest most of us have never learned it before like investments and all that so like you generally have to do your own research or maybe ask other people because like for the financial part there's investments stocks and all that generally we've never learned that in school but because I sometimes I deal with stocks and I ask some of my 
brands that deal in stocks. Like you go outside research, and from that you gather all the data, which can help you um, excel in in the IEO, which generally is a bit different than conventional studying for an exam. Mm -hmm. I think that's very well said. Yeah. Are there any other hints or advice that from any of the other representatives? All right, <laughs> let's move on then. Um, I'm sure that you guys are very well accomplished students. So have you ever experienced any failures or difficulties in your academic or research pursuits along this journey? And how would you advise the audience watching this to handle those? I think I'll take this one. Sure. Uh, okay. Honestly, I think sometimes people tend to place a lot of pressure on themselves, especially maybe people who are more accomplished and people who are used to, you know, being at the very top all the time. I think that sometimes it can definitely be a bit frustrating, like the whole process, or maybe at a point in which, you know, you don't get your result, the, the results that you wanted at the end of the day. I think like something I just want to tell people is that even if you don't get the things that you've wanted at the end of the day or things don't turn out the way you've always wanted them to be, I think it's something that is perfectly fine as well. Like I think that people have to realize that, you know, um, basically just take a little bit off take a little bit of the pressure off yourself and just relax and just, you know, be happy with the things that you have at the very end of the day. And that, you know, you're still a good person. You still try your very best. And yeah. Mm, very profound words, Alex. <laughs> Let's move on to some more lighthearted content, I guess. Um, could you share how training for the IEO has been so far? And what are the, some of the ups and downs or certain highlights that you've had so far? Um, so, so far we've had, um, we got to know that we, we, that all of us are in this team, like just about two months before IO start, start. Mm. So, um, it's been about a month now. And for the training, we, we have, um, we have a trainer who is also, um, working. His name is Mr. Hamidi. He is very um very well knowledgeable in stocks and economics. So he always tries to um give us materials like from books, um from books that he can find and stuff. So usually um usually he he asks us to refer to like the core econs book, and he mm. also has this um teacher's manual in which he has answers to certain questions which we students cannot answer. I think it's um based on a paid subscription or something. So that's our main go-to resource. Um, besides that, he also um, showed us how to do real-time trading, which I'm sure like none of us actually know. So that is something we just got to know. Like we are really new to this. Um, yep, I think that's about it. And also, I think all of us individually, we are also like um, studying certain mm -hmm. topics by ourselves. Um, yep, that's about it. Sounds quite exciting. Could I ask maybe how intensive the training has been so far? Does, um, do you go for quite regular sessions or are you largely left to your own devices? Um, as of now, we have meetings every week. Um, mm. But after this, I think because there's less than a month now, I think we would get on more face-to-face uh, -face meetings and probably more uh, like twice a week or something. And also as a team, we... Um, we try to push ourselves, and we also like join, uh, and we also join a case study competition so that we get to know each other better. Like just before this IEO comes, so that we can like coordinate stuff properly. So that's how we intend to prepare ourselves by putting ourselves into like other competitions just before this, so that we get that experience to work as a team before joining IEO. Wow. Sounds like quite a lot of effort to be done yet. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, best of luck with that, I guess. Thanks. So <clears throat> about economics in general, do you feel like 
there are any stereotypes that people make, people who don't necessarily study economics or certain first impressions that they make about economics? And maybe what is one stereotype about economics or a lesser known piece of information that you would that you could share with our audience today? It could be like a piece of trivia or like <laughs> some just something interesting. Um, okay, maybe I'll just answer this. Um, I think that maybe for a general perception, like people who don't intend on like pursuing econs in university, or like maybe when I talk with a, a lot of my friends about like, oh, well, what do, what are you going to learn um, when you take up econs in uni? Like, I think the general perception that comes from them is that, you know, you'll be doing a lot of like essay writing and like this is supposed to be an arts a, a sort of like arts based subject Let, let's just call it that way but i think that what people don't realize that when you pursue econs at a higher level is that the subject can get incredibly math based and i think that's what people don't tend to realize because you know you have a lot of things to do with like um methodology uh, count, uh stuff like tracking data and I think those are really important elements of studying econs at a higher level. And math plays a huge role in the field itself. But yeah. I see. I see. Does anyone else also share the same opinion or have any other facts that they would like to share? I agree with Alexander on that. Sure. Um, yeah, Julius, did you have something to say? Oh, no, I say I agree with Alexander Weiser. Oh, all right, all right. So <clears throat> just before we end this um, interview, it's been lovely to have you all here today. Um, we'd love if you could share some advice for students who are also aspiring towards the Economics Olympiad. Are there any kind of vital preparation tips, insights, or even inspiring words that you might have? Just do it. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, how about Ashwin? Um, like what what insights do I have for future participants, right? Yeah, or even like tips for preparing or words of inspiration like Julius. Okay. <laughs> yes, of course I of course I do agree with Julius because like the first step for you to do something is to actually go on, go heads on and like and start doing it and also i feel that people um like future participants should also go through um the past year papers that are available in like kijang and my eo and actually start to do them because um i find from my experience and from some of my friends that i know they many of them like they participate in this competition without actually knowing like what is this about and i feel that if they are more prepared in terms of um like what to expect and what kind of questions are going to come then they would probably be much more motivated and they can also be much more successful and in and that might increase their chances to get selected to the next stages so that for that i feel they should um, put more effort into doing maybe passive papers and to also ask around from those who have participated in this competition previously that is one way forward um Besides that, I also think that um, specifically for them to learn more about finance, they should also maybe start reading more of business news and um, learning about more trading stocks, uh, learning on how to trade stocks and stuff, because that is something that none of us like have that much knowledge of. We all have like very surface level and there's this finance component in IO which carries like a quarter of the marks. And so, yeah, it's very important for that. I see, I see. How about Lini? Um, any words of encouragement or insights into preparing? Um, I think you don't need to pressure yourself. I think, like in my case, um, I just read that you can just go to the Kitchen Economics website 
on the International Economic Olympiad website and you can just read how you can prepare. But you don't have to like overpressure yourself. Like things will just go with the flow, I guess. <laughs> you don't even expect <laughs> like you'll be going to the next level. Just do your best, I guess. Yeah. Thank you for that. And lastly, um, Alex, any thoughts or preparation? Uh... I mean, for what I did, like, was like, I just went to, you know, the IU and the Kijang website, um, took a look at the syllabus and looked into the material a little bit before I did the Kijang uh, economics test. And then I think for MYEO, you know, you just look through a little bit of past years, again, check through the syllabus uh, online. Um, I think one important thing is that, you know, as you, I think maybe for pre-U students is that as you progress further into pre-U, like maybe if you're like a second year economic student, I think it becomes far easier for you to answer the questions. Because uh, like, what I mean is like, oh, when I when I did the competition at first, like I, I think I, I didn't make it at first, but then the second time I did it, like I think things became far easier to grasp. So I think what I want to tell people is that like, as time goes by and as you know you naturally process in more information whether it be like from your school syllabus or outside your school skill school syllabus like yeah i think that naturally you know you absorb more information and the whole process for like answering questions in these kind of olympiads become a lot easier for you so if you fail your first time i think that's perfectly fine there's always a next time unless, you know, there, there is no next time for you. But if there is <laughs> next time for you, I think, like, just look forward to that next attempt. And I'm very, very, very sure that you will do far better. Yeah. Right. Would you say that a lot of preparation time is needed to participate in uh, the rounds like Kijang and Maio? Or are there certain parallels with, like, the A-level syllabus or the economics that you learn studying for SVM? I think that for MYEO and Kijang, there tends to be a lot of parallels with the A-level syllabus. I think like, like as what Ashwin said, um, the finance content and the business content, okay, maybe if you study business, then the content will be easier. But because we don't study business, like I think we just needed to, like I think, yeah, you just need to look more a little bit about uh finance in finance topics and business topics if you want to answer those kind of questions that do come out in Pijang or MYU. Right. I think they're yeah okay. Mm, okay. All right. Oh. Well that's the end of the questions that I had for you guys. Uh, are there any questions from you guys that you would like to ask about a miso or anything? All right. <laughs> if that's the case, then, well, it's been a pleasure to be able to interview you guys today. Um, I'm, I'm sure Wei Yang also feels the same. Um, yeah, thank you so much for coming today. And we look forward you know, to... I just wanted to ask, uh, were our voices all clear? Like, everything okay? Yeah, well, uh, for no me, for my desktop, yeah, okay. it's fine. But I'll check again uh, in the recording okay. and let you know. Okay, sure. Yeah, just checking. All right. Okay. But thank you guys all for being here today. I recognize that it's quite late, so I'll let you guys go. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Thank Bye. You. Thanks Thank so you. much for inviting Bye. us. Thank Bye. you. Good night. Bye. Bye-bye.